Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, an Android designed specifically to bring you the hottest takes and the smartest interpretation and analysis of games as art that are available in this, the year of our Lord 2021. This is the next episode of my Dishonored Let's Play, episode probably 16, let's keep that running joke going, and um, yeah, this should be the final cell of the uh, various different zones leading up to the actual mission area, which is on the other side of those buildings. But before we dive in, I just want to mention it. Take you know, take thirty seconds to mention that uh, I'm streaming again. I started a couple weeks ago. I've been working my way through Resident Evil Eight, Resident Evil Village, and uh, yeah, if you want to check that out, the links are in the description of this episode, as always. So go check out my Twitch channel. Go follow me there if you want to see me do what I do even liver than I do in these episodes. If you're watching this in the future, I might, I will probably have moved on to a different game by now. I don't know if people actually do, like, binge my archives. I hope they do. That would be extremely satisfying. But, um, yeah, so... Episodes are regularly scheduled. It is currently uh, Monday and Thursday at 7pm UK time every week. There are also randomly, uh, randomly decided streams at other times. I'm just going to abduct this man politely, you know, so that he doesn't get himself into trouble. And uh, yeah, let's uh, move on, I guess. So, uh, actually, I'm very amused by the idea that he'll wake up in, a, in an apartment up here and have no idea how he got there. Let's put him gently onto this chair. Oh, that looks quite comfortable, actually. Yeah, no, he's just like, he's an old man who's fallen asleep on his whoopsie yowza. I did not realise that was a physics object. Uh, the decision of what is and is not a physics object in this game is kind of arbitrary a lot of the time. Um, some are interactable, like bottles, some are not, like that. I mean, I guess that was a, that was a gazunder, a, a, a potty that goes under the bed. Because as we have established, they have not developed indoor plumbing yet at this point. It's been a while since I spoke about that, but one of the really interesting decisions that they made in the design of this game is that, um, well, immersive sims in general as a tradition tend to feature toilets. A lot of games don't because, well, a lot of games are not that invested in uh, representing physical spaces as if they were real. However, immersive sims um, as a specific subgenre of like first person action RPGs actually do have this this tradition of representing physical spaces as if they were real places um, with this intention of you being able to interact with them as if they were real places and if there was not a uh, a toilet in this world you would notice and you'd be like why the fuck aren't there any toilets in this world what do people do um which is why you know there's the kind of uh, deus ex tradition of, of having a toilet that you can interact with sneak into hide the corpses of guards in, etc. So this is one another this is another one of the many environmental puzzles. It is actually completely possible to get through here without solving the environmental puzzle. If you do it right, you can jump over there without much difficulty using uh, the upgraded blink and the upgraded jumping ability. Oh buddy, it's really tempting to knock you off there, huh? There's another guy around here, but with a bit of luck. I can just take this guy. I can just uh, abduct him without much issue. There's one more patroller around, I think. Ah, oh, look. Who, who threw out perfectly good money? Who just throws money in the trash? How wasteful. What a what an inappropriate way to behave. Um, anyway, so the environmental puzzle of this area is that, essentially, you need to get through this uh, arc gateway. The access is over there. The only way to get through that is to get through this uh, spinning wheel. You can teleport through it, climb over it, or you can shut it down up here and go through manually. Although, if they have this large generator here, it's not entirely clear to me why they couldn't just hook up the, uh... Oh, I hear a man. I hear a man smoking a cigarette. I hear a man who is about to be very surprised by something that happens to him. There's nothing like, uh, assaulting someone mid-cigarette to really, you know, surprise the fuck out of them. My ultimate goal is to startle someone at the moment they take a puff so that they accidentally swallow the whole damn thing. Not even a hint of suspicion in this guy as to where his buddies disappeared to, but, um, you know, they don't hire these guys for their intelligence. So that should be the last NPC wandering around in this area. I... I could have just dropped him on this mattress, but instead I threw him face first onto what looks like copper plating. Um, every day Corvo wakes up and chooses violence. 
regardless. Uh, yeah, so the puzzle is basically get to the other side of that. There's a few different ways to do it so that you can shut down that. Um, but before we do that, we're going to check out a couple more. I swear I can hear rats eating someone. Also, you may or may not be able to hear my neighbour's incredibly annoying, loud and yappy dog, which is making lots of noise right now. Don't know what's up with it. The last couple of days it's been a lot louder than usual, but uh, regardless. You can teleport through here, or if you're fast you can just get through it anyway, or you can climb over. There's many different ways. Let's grab a hold of this. Get rid of that. I'm sure the fish won't mind. Actually, fuck the fish. They're extremely carnivorous. Anyway, um, right. There should be a couple more things to grab around here. And again, you can see there's lots of Imsim style routes to get through different places without being seen. You don't have to knock everybody out and store them in various crevices, but that's uh, that's the way we've chosen to play today. An apricot tart. I could really go for one of those. I actually know that my flatmate has a little box of them in the cupboard, but I'm being good and not stealing them because that would be terrible. Anyway, back to toilets. So, um... The thing about the uh, the presence of the toilet in the Imsim is that it indicates that this is a real space. That this is a space inhabited by humans who behave like humans and think about things like humans. And um, it's just one part of the uh, texture of a world, which is really what you come to an Imsim for. It's spaces that make sense and to be interacted with in sensible ways. If you can hear me over the sound of furious gunshots as I wipe these various things out. There's about eight of them. There's always one or two more than I than I remember. Um. Anyway, uh, yes. Yeah, so the fact is that the Dishonored is set in a time when indoor plumbing was not common. Indoor plumbing was, you know, popularized um, quite early in the UK uh, or in England at least, and um, you know it spread pretty quickly, but it was something reserved for the wealthy for the most part. Most people, even during the 1700s, even in um, the 1800s, the 1900s, were, you know, they did what people had done for thousands of years and uh, would piss and shit in, in a pot that you kept under the bed or kept in a cupboard and threw out the window when you were done with it. And um, there is an interesting little aspect to this in Dishonored, which is that I'm not going to be able to reach that without falling in the water. Which is that in Dishonored 1, we see those pots. Um, that, that They are everywhere, and uh, some people have little seats built for them, and some people just have them lying around open. And yeah, that's what the... It's a weird historical thing. It's something that people are very squeamish about, and therefore don't like to represent. So if a game, even set in this era, has toilets, uh, they will either be external latrines, or, um, or they will be anachronistic... Uh, flushing toilets. But this is Dishonored, and it was designed by people who were very good at what they do. So instead of that, what we have are these uh, realistic um, mechanisms. In the modern day, people are very squeamish about this sort of thing, so they don't like to think about the fact that for most of human history, people did just, like, people did just, like, let their filth <laughs> get all over everything, because what the fuck else can you do? I mean, people were... People were cleaner than is popularly remembered by, uh, you know, history, you know. The concept of the Dung Ages in fantasy is 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 almost comedy at this point, but um, I... People were cleaner than people generally remember, but, you know, when your options are limited, you will just, you will just uh, piss in a jar and throw it out the window. So, yeah. I think it's really pleasing to me that instead of going for anachronistic um, flushing toilets or the absence of toilets, they have actually chosen to just accept that historical reality. Although the refusal, therefore, to uh, accept the historical realities of some of the other things they gesture at, um, such as the way they uh, use historical metaphors to establish Morley as a kind of analogy for uh, the interactions between um, England and Ireland <clears throat> at the time of like intense colonization and brutality of the Irish, while not actually acknowledging any of that brutality, or 
even far, far worse, uh, my aforementioned distaste with the way that this game handles the, the concept of slavery as a thing that existed at this time in history, or in the times that um, this fictional setting were inspired by in real history. So, uh, yeah, moving on from all of that, I th <laughs> this is the least efficient way to do this, but let's not waste any resources. Since we are playing uh, Corvo a good man, naturally he would hear this, this person calling for help, and uh, here we are. Thank you for helping me. I thought it was safe. There were rats. So many rats. Completely infested. I know some folks aren't superstitious, but I swear, the rats showed up after a man came through, waving around an amulet of some kind. It looked like it was made of bone. But he's dead now. Like the others who were living here. So the reward you get for rescuing her is that she tells you there's an amulet here, which you already know because you can hear it singing and also, you know, if, you, if you're sensible, every time you enter a new cell you equip the heart and see uh, what is what there is to see. There's a few ways to rescue her. You can um, draw the rats away by throwing some of these corpses in a corner, corner which gives her time to escape. Or you can, uh, you know, make a corpse pile and attract the rats to it so that they're all together and then you can kill them all with one bomb. Or you can just smash them, or if you have wind blast you can use wind blast to destroy a, wat a rat- <laughs> destroy a wat swarm uh, really quickly. So let's see what this guy says. 29th month of wind. I finally found a new place where I should be able to hide and survive for a long time if I stay quiet. The city watch condemned the building so this basement should be a safe spot. I have to believe that. Everything is going as expected. The watch patrols the street nearby, but they never enter this building. Food is the problem, but I managed to steal some during the night. Someone else found this place and wants to share it. He has a strange amulet made of bone that he claims protects him from the plague. We'll see. Perhaps we can help each other, but I'm losing confidence in the odds of my survival. Since he arrived, I've been having bad dreams and I really don't feel well. There are more and more rats in the building. Soon I won't be able to leave this shack even if I want to. I'm starting to think the amulet is cursed. So again, this reinforces this indication that, um, you know, people people make these amulets to achieve various different goals, but the ultimate goal is- hi, are you okay? You good? You good. Uh, the ultimate goal is to, you know, manipulate magic and achieve a goal in um, some kind of safe way. But this is always dangerous, it always has negative effects of some kind because it is an inherently corrupting force. So it probably did make that guy immune to the plague, however it definitely also drew a lot of rats to him. Which is a kind of a monkey's paw, like, ironic punishment, if you think about it. So I've skipped these books previously, but I think I will just get rid of all of them now, so that we can run through them in one session. Call to the Spheres, excerpt from a work of fiction. My stomach twisted as the engines of the odd vessel roared louder. It was the creation of Okado, the third prefect from the Academy of Natural Philosophy. He was exhilarated, savouring each of the small craft's undulations. Orkado pulled a lever and a great gout of smoke surrounded us. The smell of burning whale oil grew unbearable as the machine propelled itself upward. I was too afraid to look through the window, which suddenly did not feel thick enough. As if knowing my thoughts, Overseer Bryn looked at me and smiled. Recite some of the litany, my pupil. It will protect your heart from the turpitude of the void on our way to the outer spheres. Orkado was elated like a boy of sixteen on the evening of the Fuge Feast. When we are back in Bristol, I'll be named Royal Physician. Or you will be burned for heresy, Third Prefect. All depends on what we find when we get there. My master's voice was different, as if the air of the outer spheres added qualities normally absent. Uncertainty, weakness, fear. I risked another glance at the monolithic structure in the distance. It was a wonder for Orkado, a puzzle for Overseer Bryn, and for me, a towering monument to emptiness. A magnificent shrine to madness. I do not fear the void, nor am I concerned with the spiritual sanctity of the weak, for I am now his herald, his chosen, having seen his sublime vault, where eternally he feeds upon the substance of the void. Alone in Orkado's ship, the floor painted red with life, I draw designs with my fingers and gaze through the portals at the land rising below. There I will build the first monument to his glory, a rotting wound in the flesh of nature. Patiently I'll build, awaiting a arrival, a great scion of the void. So this is clearly referencing um, two uh, link. Uh, not linguistic, to, um, you know, traditions of storytelling. 
It's clearly drawing on kind of uh, Lovecraftian cosmic horror, this idea of going beyond the space that is safe and um, seeing things that one should not see, learning things that one should not learn. However, it is also drawing on um, what I would call Vernian style early science fiction, where we um, where we have, you know, brave men of science going off to discover fascinating things. I've always been a huge fan of Jules Verne. I read um, translations of his novels when I was quite young and it just lived in my brain forever. Um, so this is the, the final cell here. Anyway, so it's clearly talking about the, um, you know, the, uh, the void as someone in this universe might use it as a fictional entity, which is really interesting. It responds, um, well, it reflects very clearly the way that people thought about these things before, you know, the kind of turn of the century with this kind of um, attempts to explore uh, fictional places and ideas through the medium of fiction and um, the birth of science fiction as a genre. Is there someone in here? I can't, I can never remember. I think we're good. Yep, yeah, no need for murder today. I say having... Actually, no, I haven't killed anyone yet. Fantastic, this is great. And here is the uh, the toilets I was mentioning. Which reminds me, I was actually building a point with that. Namely that um, in addition to all of the other changes between the two games, one of the interesting little ways that the progress of this kind of era is shown, because this was a time of a vast amount of progress for both good and bad reasons, as I've talked about previously, um, and many discoveries were made, many mechanisms were popularised. Sokolov is testing others. elixirs on people to cure the plague. Why is it he always asks for healthy citizens? I mean, if you follow my meaning, sir. You have no mind for natural philosophy. Obviously, it's because the ones already sick with plague don't live long enough to provide Sokolov with any useful information. It's just a shame, it's all. Like that woman the other day. She was easy to look at. Seemed nice enough. Shame she has to die. I mean, and so horrible, like, too. Now you listen to me. It's none of our concern the how or why of things. And if you want your elixir rations, then I suggest you stop your wondering. These are pigs. Pigs for Sokolov's experiments. And pigs mean nothing to me. Understand? Right, right. I mean, why worry about a couple of disgusting smelly pigs, you know? All pigs get slaughtered sooner or later. Better if I wonder about those sounds we heard from the warehouse, right? I mean... <laughs> What was that all about? That's better. You'll go far, Grayson. An excellent example of the concept of moral cowardice, or ideological cowardice. God forbid this guy actually take a stand or anything. So this is Sokolov's house, but I won't be talking about it today. You'll have to come back next episode for the actual uh, exploration of Sokolov's house in and of itself. I'm just going to finish exploring the area out here first, because, uh, well, there's plenty left for the rest of this episode so <laughs> um yeah this is probably one of the it's not the longest chapter in the game but it's it's longer than i tend to remember um so this episode may run a little bit long who knows anyway what the fuck was i talking about uh right this was an era this this game is inspired by what was historically in the real world an era of like progress is a is a is a concept that it, does not necessarily have value, but it was an era in which a great many things were discovered, a great many mechanisms were developed, both um, conceptually in the minds of the people and the minds of um, people attempting to understand the world, and in terms of physicality. A lot was discovered during this time. So given that, it's quite funny to me that one of the ways this is represented in the game is that between the first and second games in the Dishonored franchise, we go from... Uh, Everyone just shitting in pots, including the royalty, because you can see them in Dunwall Tower. Uh, to the wealthy actually having flushing toilets. Higgins, I recently got a tip about a stash hidden at the north end of Caldwin's Bridge. Another crazy bastard keeping all this shiny stuff in a secret room. I was told you need to turn the faucet in an old sink three times to open a secret door. No information on the value of what's in the room, only heard about it. a street speaker hanging over the road outside the door. Don't forget my share if you find it. No indication of what killed this guy or how he got up here. This is another one of these odd little, like, 
things that it doesn't occur to you to question. It's like, sure, there's dead people all over the place, but like that guy's on a rooftop. He didn't get eaten by rats. There's no darts around, so he didn't get killed by whalers. Is that guy going to spot me? No, we're fine. So this is the other side of this barrier, which we saw as we entered this area. And this is the room that they were talking about. You can tell because out here there is a street speaker. It's kind of difficult and irritating to find this secret stash, but it is a secret stash, and a lot of the things in this game are not actually very carefully hidden. So it's nice that this one actually takes a bit of effort to find. As we were told, we're going to activate this three times. Gonna make sure we have bend time as well, because uh, <laughs> there's a nasty little trap in here for us. And that'll do it. Let's just, actually, I why not just use a quick, why not? This is what they're for when you're uh, playing non-lethally. So the guy outside absolutely heard that bomb. Uh, the patrolling guard, the one who proved himself a coward in uh, conversation with his superior officer. I can understand why someone would do that, but I also think that just accepting it and going, hmm, sir, should we, should we be leading these citizens to the slaughter? And then getting told, don't worry about it. And then going, oh, okay, sure, I won't worry about it then. Is That is not the sign of a man with a backbone, let's be honest. Is he still out? Oh, shit. Did he see me? He saw me. So, well, that's one murder today, I guess. Fortunately, I can ensure that no one will ever find him. There's uh, one or two areas left to explore before we finish up for today. I keep forgetting that barrier's there. With a bit of luck, I won't be killing anyone else, although I probably should, let's be real, probably should kill the commanding officer of the man I just murdered. Uh, there he is over there. Maybe I'll just put him somewhere unpleasant. An ironic punishment for him. With a bit of luck, he'll turn around in a second because he just patrols along the street here. I think there's one or two more patrolling guards around, but uh, they are in other areas. So if I make a if I make a commotion, a ruckus, they will definitely come running. But if they don't, then we're we're golden. Boom. Unfortunate that I managed to teleport behind him at like. Oh, what a convenient bush. Unfortunate that I managed to teleport behind him at exactly the wrong moment, but whatever. I was actually going to uh, knock him out and put him in there, which is the mysterious um, Sokolov testing zone for the people who have been rounded up by the police and just declared to be subjects for human experimentation with no due process or indeed uh, recourse to, to law or anything. Yeah, see, there's another guy. It'd be ironic if that was the guy who, who expressed discomfort and then it was some other random guy that I killed, but oh well. Also worth noting, these ones are actually wearing masks. A lot of the guards in the game do not wear masks, even though they really should, simply because, um... Well, I assume that there's some ex to some extent bravado, um amongst the populace, not unlike the bravado represented in real life by people who think that wearing a mask in a pandemic is some kind of restriction of their civil liberties. Um, which is a mindset I cannot remotely understand, but whatever. So I don't think I missed anything in this building. I just look, it, this is one of the many ways into Sokolov's area, which <laughs> uh, is a phrase that I will not be talking about, despite uh, well, in the aficionados of um, fanfic, I, I might knock that guy out because he's inconvenient, but let's not. In the aficionados of um, fanfic featuring not just men, but specifically uh, crunchy middle-aged men, which I think is actually a really important genre to exist, and I'm very pleased that it does exist. don't know if anyone who, who watches these is a fan of that. I know I definitely know some people on Tumblr who have a particular interest in, um, uh, let's say, sweaty middle-aged men discovering feelings for one another. So I do know that there is a fair amount of suckle of fanfiction. And um, I can see it, especially in the second game, but, like, <laughs> well, this is a complete aside that is irrelevant to anything. Anyway, 
so I just need to save these people now, which won't be difficult. <sighs> what the fuck was I talking about before that aside? I started talking about crusty old men and I don't remember why. Nearby, there's a partially collapsed building. Up on what used to be the third floor, you'll see a painting. I used to work there. Behind the painting, there's a safe, and the code is 294. 294. So yeah, um, these poor fools were just rounded up off the streets. I don't believe there's any ever any explanation of why they were declared suitable targets for Sokolov's um, malicious sciencing. Oh, hey, Sam. You're here. Fantastic. I'm glad you have arrived. Hope the night treats you well, Corvo. I'll be here when you have what you came for. Cool. I'm busy right now, but I'll be back shortly. So, um, yeah. That is almost all of this area. I do just need to go loot that safe. But as you can see, if you've been paying attention, there are a great many ways into Sokolov's, uh, Sokolov's building. And, um, yeah, we have successfully rescued his, uh, his various piggies, which is... Should we gather for whiskey and cigars tonight? Hey, he said the line! So, um, I'm sure I hear... Oh, that sound is not rats. That sound is stuff falling off these ruined buildings. I don't know if there's any indication as to why these buildings are ruined. Several of the other bridges in the city are ruined. In fact, this may be the only extant uh, bridge. You can see there's at least two other bridges. You can't see them from here, but you can see there are at least two other bridges. It was two something nine, wasn't it? There are at least uh, two other ruined bridges. So if this is the only functional bridge, it makes sense that it would be so heavily traveled. However, it does not make sense that, um... oh, for fuck's sake. 294, I was completely wrong. See, I'm so bad at maths, I can't even remember a number across, like, 30 seconds. There we go. So what the fuck was I talking about? God only knows. Um, I straight up, I straight up do not remember for the life of me what I was saying a second ago. Self-critical automaton, come for the uh, critical media interpretation and analysis. Stay for my inability to remember things across- oh fuck. A gap of about 30 seconds. So what happened there was that I was just inside his vision radius, which alerted him, but did- which, um... There's different stages of alert. It put him into the suspicious mode, where he's looking around for what upset him. Um, but I teleported away before he saw enough of me that he went to f actual alert mode, in which case he would have started trying to chase me or, um, letting other guards know. Anyway, so... Yeah, um, I don't know if the- the damage to this part of the bridge is supposed to be referential to um, the tendency of the historical London Bridge to have bits fall off of it periodically, hence the nursery rhyme, although as I mentioned previously there was no time when it actually completely collapsed. Um, or it might just be further reference to- there are there are very few hints to this in the game, but there are implications, much like the other destroyed bridges, to the historical conflict of 100-200 years prior, which established the Empire of the Isles. Um, with Gristol successfully conquering the various other isles and bringing them into a single unified empire. Which I will talk about another time, but for now, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stay over here out of that guy's sight lane and join me next time to actually have a look inside Sokolov's futurist apartment building. That's all from me. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you next time. If you like this, you can also follow me on Twitter for updates, stream announcements, and one-tweet micro-reviews, or why not donate to me via Patreon or Ko-fi, or just share my work. Thank you so much for watching.